Well, let me add my welcome to John's and uh, welcome you to uh, this study of uh, Isaiah chapter 2. We're going to be thinking about the subject of trust today. Uh, whom we trust, uh, what does that trust look like, and are the people and things that we trust in reliable? Trust is a massive subject through the book of Isaiah, and so it's really just the beginning of sketching an idea out for us. But I wonder, uh, do you know who you trust? Who pays the bills? Who um, feeds you and clothes you and puts a, a roof over your head? I guess ordinarily we'd, we'd look to the breadwinners in our house, won't we? Uh, perhaps our pension scheme, perhaps mum and dad. I wonder if you've ever uh, thought about where your trust goes when things look like they're out of control. Having a job, uh, paying the bills, uh, gives us the illusion of, of having a degree of control. But I wonder what you do. Let's say you have a, a, a difficult situation at work or at school. Uh, life suddenly feels out of control. Where do you go? What do you do to regain that sense of control? Or where do you look to resolve uh, the stressful situation you're in? could be a number of things, couldn't it? I, I think we, we tend in one of two directions. Uh, sometimes we double down on uh, control. Uh, eating disorders are uh, notoriously about trying to take control when life feels out of control. And some of us will know what that feels like. Others of us will be inclined to towards uh, forgetfulness. We don't like the feeling of stress and anxiety and uh, not being in control. And so we might turn to uh, alcohol. I have a good Christian friend who, who really struggles with that. Uh, she doesn't drink much, but in stressful situations, she almost can't go without having a glass of wine in the evening. Um, that habit, that way of coping can build up to be an addiction, can't it? A habit that we require to cope with situations. And, and people have all sorts of coping mechanisms. Uh, pornography and sex will be another. Uh, perhaps you're somebody who rages uh, when you're stressed and anxious. It just everything comes out. It's a release and you, you almost have to, to shout and scream to get it out. Some of us will love distraction. I wonder if you've ever had that situation where you're sat on the sofa flicking through Netflix and just there's nothing you really want to watch, but you want to watch something because you want to be distracted from the stressful situation you're facing. Some of us will do that with computer games. Some of us will do that with music. Uh, we perhaps do sports. Uh, we, we go for a run to try and uh, control the, 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 the feelings that are running through us. The adrenaline and endorphins from a run might... Uh, overcome that stress and anxiety. There's all sorts of coping mechanisms we have when life feels out of control and uh, stressful. And of course, uh, some of those things are okay things, some of those things are, are bad things. All of them, when we lean on them and expect them to, to resolve the situation for us, become idols and addictive habits. We can lean into all sorts of things, can't we? to cope with a stressful future. Sometimes we uh, redouble our efforts to trust in ourselves. Sometimes we trust in other people. And sometimes, uh, oftentimes I think, we, we do a mixture of all of those things. We trust in ourselves up to a point and we work really hard to be as in control as we can be. We work hard at school so we can get the best grade, so that we can go to the right university, so that we can get the, the qualifications we need to get a good job that means we're in control. And once we have those jobs, we work hard to keep them and to progress in them because uh, being able to, to stay in that situation means we have a degree of control. And that idea of controlling situations, that the unseen future, is very much at the heart of at the beginning of our passage uh, this morning. There are a variety of things that the people of Judah are, are trusting in to cope with uh, a difficult situation around them. Uh, there's a variety of threats and a variety of 
uh, of false gods that they're turning to to cope with that. So th these are people who still go to the temple. They still go through the formal worship of God. But we know the city has become full of murderous, thieving, uh, bribery, uh, behaviours that are about taking more for ourselves, more control, uh, more stuff, more money, more power, means more ability to deal with the unseen future. And, and the poorest and the weakest are being thrust to one side and, and left in the gutter. It's a horrible picture we saw in chapter one. And now we see something of, of, sort of the spiritual uh, underpinnings of that. Chapter 2 verse 6. The city is full of superstitions from the east. They practice divination like the Philistines. Think about what superstitions are in our country. Just uh, throwing salt over your shoulder to ward off bad luck. Uh, magpies, black cats, broken mirrors, not walking under ladders. All of those are about trying to ward off um, a future that we can't see. We worry that we've tempted fate, that's the phrase, isn't it? And so we knock on wood to, to somehow deal with the, the, the unfortunate thing that we've just said. We're afraid of the future. And we, do, we, we developed as a culture a whole variety of practices, superstitions, that are meant to control the uncontrollable. And so are Judah. A divination is about trying to find the future out through occult means. They had turned to those things. They'd, they'd turned to embracing pagan customs, says it, shaking hands with foreigners, making alliances culturally and militarily with uh, bigger nations. If you're a small country like Judah, uh, you can't control the future. You, you, you see enemies coming and you shake hands with Egypt, you shake hands with Assyria, you shake hands with Babylon and you try and form military alliances to protect yourself. You trust in people. Uh, you trust in trade. They uh, make money. They sell goods. They, they, they bring in all sorts of things that in theory protect them. They, they build Great armies up, horses and chariots, trusting in the armies, trusting in the, the city walls, trusting in the high towers that will allow them to see what is coming. They trust in themselves and the things they've done. And when they're not big enough, they trust in other people, the EU, the UN. Now we depend on the police, don't we? We depend on uh, the government and, and the military to protect us because we can't we can't deal with with invasions we can't deal with terrorism we can't deal with those things at all but we trust in the other people who can and our trust turns from god and our religious practice can become just formally going through the motions while actually all of our trust is in ourselves and in the things that we do to cope and when the things that we're facing are too big for us, we trust in other people. I think we do that with the NHS, don't we? Um, we've seen with the coronavirus, the NHS can't solve death. Uh, save the NHS, save our idol, because we've asked the, the NHS to save us so many times. And now we see it is, it's a human thing, isn't it? A human institution that we've turned to trust in. Isaiah puts his finger on the, the combination of things that his people have done, put their trust in, to say, be very, very careful. These things cannot save. And we'll think a bit more about that in just a moment. But first, we're going to sing. <laughs> 